I, I still now I get I get anxious. I get I wouldn't say nervous, but the butterflies though that that still that comes in live VPs against Bueller in the on the backfield. Mm-hmm. That's that's all the time. I mean, um, but it's just like in those situations and when you are nervous, which is absolutely not uh, there's nothing wrong with being nervous. Everybody every, that happens to everybody. Um, but just like you said, just breathing slows the heart rate down and, and just slows your body down. And so you can make the decisions and, and really play like you want to play. And Coach Chad Chop, here we are with the biggest baseball podcast ever of all time. All 47 million of you out there listening. Um, what'd you have for breakfast? What's your nickname? Is there somebody in your room you could go and, and, and fist bump or shake hands and just give 12 seconds of uncomfortable eye contact and, and make smile? Um, I'll go to you, Chad Chop. Uh, what, what is the what is the thing that would make your wife or your kids smile this morning? Man, just just unconditional love, just a big smile. My my seven year old woke up this morning, went straight to the PS4, and uh, and I was like, hey, no uh, no hug for your dad, so big hug and uh, big hug. Like you know, giving a hug to your loved one is great. Uh, the question I have to ask you is, where are you? Yeah, for the listener out there not watching too bad because I look like I'm I'm just exiting a tropical forest in I don't know what what's what what where am I tropical uh, uh, South South America somewhere yeah um, but I'm not I'm, I'm in North America I'm in <laughs> Arizona I'm in Scottsdale and we are at the Great Wolf Lodge Oh, wow. Because it's uh, it's Thanksgiving week, uh, uh, we'll drop this in a couple weeks, so it won't be Thanksgiving when you're listening to it, listener. But um, we decided to pack up the van and give the two girls, got two daughters, give them a week, give them a fun week, make it all about them. So we found this great water park in Phoenix, Arizona, and we drive five and a half hours. We throw some DVDs uh, in the van. DVD player there, rocking out to some great podcasts and music. And then we get to the resort and the water park is closed. Oh, Bang. Oh. And now, uh, before I tell you what we did, Chad Chop, um, what would you do in that moment? What would your thought process be? Tell me. Wow. Uh, well, you got to control the controllables, right? So right out of the gate, uh, I'm going to look for probably the nearest uh, most favorite restaurant of uh, the collective in the car. So we're going to be like, you know what? Hey, you know what? Let's go circle the wagons. We're going to head over to In-N-Out. Everyone gets a chocolate shake and we're going to put our heads together and we're going to we're going to make the most of this. But that would be my first move. And then I would probably defer to uh, the smartest family member, which is my wife. And uh, she would probably save the day like she always does. Boy, uh, you talk about foreshadowing what I'm about to say. It almost went down exactly like that. <laughs> um, as soon as we found out, you know, there were some sad faces, there was some crying, and my knee-jerk reaction is to, well, at least we're not a jellyfish, and at yeah. least we don't eat and and uh, breathe and use the bathroom out of the same orifice. You know, we've got we we're humans, <laughs> and we don't have to do that. But I've learned that um, uh, the grieving process needs to take time. And, and um, if you wanna just throw positivity into a negative bowl of soup um, immediately, it, it's, it's gonna have some problems. So I just kind of sat quietly, uh, tried to you know, keep your chin up. When one door closes, um, a better door opens. That's what I kept thinking. And then, yep, deferred right to Mrs. Ballgame. Mm-hmm. She found the Great Wolf Lodge right here in Scottsdale. There, there's a major league spring training facility right next to us. There's a top golf. We're right down the road from Talk and Stick uh, oh. a Golf Club. So um, she found it. It's got a beautiful painted backdrop of what looks to be, you know, deep Pennsylvania where wolves are just about to attack at any second. Um, and it's, it's great. The, the, there's a water park where they could do slides and, 
um, uh, you know, tubes and, and then there's, there's food all around. So we fed them lots of candy and we found them a new spot and, and now they're happy, but you know, there, there was a, a little, a little Clark Griswold in me, uh, yeah. this entire week, like, uh, is starting to, starting to put some lights up around the house. <laughs> and 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 just going all at it. You know, we didn't have the best year. There was things that happened uh, that that just we needed some Christmas spirit. So I'm I've put lights on every single tree I could find. Uh, we've made these arches out of PVC pipe. I, I really felt handy, and I'm the least handy person in the world. But uh, you can see me carrying 16 um, pieces of PVC pipe. I got some rebar about mm -hmm. uh, 16 of those got the hands nice and dirty you got you know and you walk out of home depot just really feeling oh, good yeah. about yourself i just felt like a dad yep. um and uh and so i've been throwing lights all over the place and then we hop in the car for this uh festivity here and yeah it, it, it's all worked out for the best so um very excited to be in arizona the same state as you although we're very we far apart yeah, we're in the same spot and, uh, you know, it feels good. It feels like our forces are aligned and I'm proud of you. That, that's a tough, that's a tough dad moment, but uh, you and Mrs. Ballgame handled it well and, and that's well played. Great job. So you made good. lemonade, you made lemonade. You certainly did. And add a girl mm -hmm. to Mrs. Ballgame. It's, it's yeah, all her. She, she did it. And yeah, I'm just really bad at that stuff and she's really good at it. And we've, we've learned our lanes and mm -hmm. my lane is to, is to let the girls grieve and and just just sit quietly and wait and and Tara Jean does the rest and yeah. then bang I carry stuff and uh and and, and <laughs> wheel it up the elevator and yep. uh and just try to be present and that's what I did I threw my lobster bathing suit on and you know went down the slip and slides with the girls and you know we've talked about it on the podcast with uh, each guest we've had I mean that's what their kids want they want them to yeah. be present, you know, yeah. and, and we've got these beards and these jobs and um, but but what is most important? And uh, don't you agree? It's being present for those four kids of yours. Man, I'll tell you, uh, last night it was playing two on two basketball in the living room. And it was uh, myself and my seven year old versus the two older boys. Ty Ty was in bed. At least that's what we thought. Turns out he was watching shows in his bed and eating tortilla chips. So that was a quick clean this morning, but yeah, being present, being engaged. When they ask you, dad, will you do this? Whether you want to do it or not, take a deep breath, smile, and absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. Be present. It, we only have so many years with our babies when they want to be around us. Right. Exactly. And then, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm so pumped today's guest and wow, you talk about them. Um, just a murderer's row of, of, of uh, guests that we've lined up, you've lined up. Um, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to start pitching in. I'm going to start chipping in. <laughs> uh, chip job. <laughs> chip uh, job. Deep pull. Now, uh, uh, who is our guest today, brother? Man, this this young man needs no introduction, but the thing that I want people to know most about him, it's Mookie Betts, by the way. And uh, and the accolades take up, you know, more than a page. I'm writing down some of the stuff that he's, uh, some of the trophies he's already won. But what I am most proud of with Mookie is just who he is as a human. And he does so many things off the field. And really does so many things that he doesn't want credit for. Uh, reached out to him last night and said, hey, Mook, what are you up to so we can tell folks what you're doing within the community and all the good things you're doing? And he's like, you know what? I'm coming on here to talk about what you guys want to talk about. We don't need to talk about me. And that's just who he is. That's really who he is. What a human. As good of a human as you're ever going to meet. Mookie Betts it, is on the show. Mookie Betts is our, is, our, uh, is our guest. And I know this would probably embarrass him if we spoke about it in front of him, but maybe you can speak to being in that Dodger clubhouse day in, day out uh, for uh, the past five years and then seeing a guy like Mookie Betts come in, what does he do for that clubhouse? He changed the culture right when he got there. And when you say that, people give pause and make changes the culture. That's a pretty good culture. There's a lot of winning going on. And there is. But what he brought to the table right when he got there, and he did it alongside Kershaw and JT, is uh, he asked them for permission, but he held everyone accountable. He's like, hey, guys, starting from day one of spring training, we have got to do things the right way right out of the gate and created a system where every error that was made from spring training all the way through the World Series, uh, it was 20 bucks. So they created a, yeah, they created like a fund 
twenty dollars uh, for every mistake. And he, you know, he there'd be days where he made a bad throw, and it was twenty bucks. And it was just this this like subtle kind of fun way to hold each other accountable with love and respect. And, uh, and that led us to a world series championship. The first one, in I believe 32 years for the city of Los Angeles, uh, as far as baseball is concerned, Lakers, Lakers handed their business. So there's still plenty of championships to go around. Oh man. Oh man. Well, just excited to, to meet him over zoom and, and talk to him, uh, a Tennessee guy that, that, uh, can play anything, any kind of sport. But like you said, our mission is to bring on people of high character and yeah. boy, does he have that uh, big time. So super pumped. Um, we, we wanted to touch on a little topic, a little coaching topic, which we yeah. do pre-interview every week. And I was listening to the Nick Hunley uh, interview again. What a great one. If you haven't heard it, folks, go get so it. any sports parent coach should listen to it. I mean, there, there's, there's 30 different sound bites I could choose from to post on my social medias to get the word out. But one thing that spoke to me and, and you're big on this is heart rate. Um, and, and maybe just for the listener, uh, it, what do we mean when, when we as coaches talk about heart rate with our players coach? Well, it's, it's a big, big thing, especially in practice. Cause once the game started, it's kind of too late. Right? So what I talk about with my kids is, just being mindful of like, hey, when the game goes, is, does the game speed up or slow down? And it speeds up, right? So in practice, let's try to control our heart rate. And you do that with breathing, right? Or anticipating. If I know what I'm going to do with the ball before it's hit to me, when it's hit to me, I'm not going to freak out. My heart rate's not going to elevate, right? And it's also creating an atmosphere within practice where we, we want our kids to be fearless. Hey, if you make a mistake, it's an opportunity for all of us to address it and get better, we're going to make mistakes. If we were perfect at this game, it would be boring. And then we'd have to go do something else that we need to grind at. So it's just setting up parameters where, you know, be fearless, uh, do your thing, but let's be, uh, let's pre-think what we're going to do with the ball. And then just really be mindful of our heart rate. We, we do it in practice. I love that. I, I wrote a blog on uh, how the practice is more important than the game, because I was noticing when I would do uh, private lessons, with my kids, they would be one version of themselves in that 30 minute practice mm -hmm. with just me uh, throwing positivity their way nonstop. And then I'd go watch them in the game uh, when there's an umpire and a scoreboard and lots of parents uh, in the bleachers. And it would be a, a totally different version of the person. And it just, it gave me this just bad taste in my mouth. Like, Oh, where's that guy, that happy, uh, that happy pitcher that, uh, that is okay with, with walking a guy uh, in a full count or okay with making a mistake. Uh, so your advice to that coach out there is, hey, let's make more high leverage moments happen in practice and, and let's, let's make sure that they have freedom to fail, that there's this mm -hmm. freedom, there's this Dairy Queen trip at the end of the game if they fail. Um, and I even go further than that. I say, uh, don't just be afraid of, of failure, like embrace it, embrace mm -hmm. that. Uh, you're, as long as you're giving it 100%, which you are, you're practicing so hard, embrace these different failures because as Hunter Pence says, it, it is not losing, it's just learning. And you are going to learn so much um, about life and about uh, you know character with these um, different moments of learning. So uh, good on you. I, I think a question that a lot of young coaches might have for you is when you notice that kid and, and it's just natural to, to, for the heart rate to go up in the game, as opposed to practice, when you notice that happening in the game, what do you do? Big thing that I try to try, try to hone in with my kids is winning the moment, right? So a heart rate elevates when we've made a mistake uh, or maybe something's coming in a few pitches or this, that, and the other. So, hey, take a deep breath, right? In through the nose, out through the mouth, and let's win the moment. So it's just a great, great kind of skill that we're teaching the kids within the confines of the sport, but more importantly in life, right? When yeah. you make a mistake, breathe, and then there's greatness in the moment. And uh, and that's really what what us as a coaching staff, we focus on is just always trying to get our and ourselves get us back in the moment let's get back in the moment everybody hey 
breathe, get back in the moment. And if you can um, teach that uh, on a baseball field, but really be teaching them how to attack a science test like that or attack yes. a problem with, with their sibling or uh, you know, their future spouse, uh, if you can teach them to win the moment in those situations, then you as a coach are winning. Right, you're win that that is winning for for a coach it, it is teaching them uh, how to take these great um, life lessons and use them way down the line. Uh, baseball really has nothing to do with it. It's just the place where uh, uh, it's the forum where you can actually mm -hmm. teach these. So uh, good on you on that. I I love I love five and five five seconds in through the nose. Mm five seconds out the mouth. And, you know, if I'm getting ready for a, an interview with somebody like Mookie Betts, that's a great thing. I, I want to win the moment. I don't want to be, um, you know, fanboy. I don't, I don't, I just want to be present and, and have a great conversation with somebody I respect greatly. Um, uh, do the five and five uh, when, when I'm feeling afraid, when I'm nervous in any situation. Um, I love that. It definitely slows the heart rate down. Um, yeah, that, that's good. I like the heart rate. You had a little something you wanted to touch on as well. Yeah, go go with it. Yeah, so uh, just to finish on that breathing, uh, that's there's science behind that. So having been a former firefighter, when we would go on a call where uh, someone was having like an anxiety attack or something, we would try to get them to slow their breathing down, which will slow your heart rate down, which will take oxygen back to your vital organs, and, and it can help get you back in the moment and calm you down. So that's not just like coach talk or like, hey, you know, drop and give me 20. No, no, it's, it's, it's a way to, uh, to help get you back, you know, back into the moment. I did have and, something that I needed. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I feel like that's just speaking again to the lens that we must look through as coaches is more of a life coach than mm -hmm. a win a baseball game coach. Uh, you're going to just, man, see your kids are going to thrive so much more. And I think they're going to win more baseball games oh, yeah. if you're looking through that lens of, of being a, a life coach as opposed to a baseball coach. But yeah, yeah. Um, switching topics, you got something good. I got something, I got something pretty good. Uh, my seven-year-old, uh, Bo Chop, uh, he's pretty good, pretty good at sports, right? And uh, so he had his playoff uh, football game, flag football over the weekend on Saturday. I don't know much about football, right? Uh, in fact, I think I call it foosball from uh, is that the water boy. It but is. Uh, yeah, so I'm sitting on my lawn chair just watching. They're the number one overall seed. And, uh, and so I'm just sitting back watching uh, Bo play. And, uh, and the game doesn't start off great. So he's looking at dad. And I'm just, you know, trying to channel my inner, my dad and your dad and Nick Hundley's dad and just stay calm in my lawn chair and breathe and, uh, you know, doing the best I can at just kind of just projecting calmness. Right. And uh, game is a great game. They end up losing 24 to 20. First time he's ever lost. Right. So he's never lost. So uh, now he's coming off the field and he does not know what to do, because normally it's like he's getting carried off on people's shoulders, you know, and here he is dejected and sad and all this stuff and upset. So uh, I just asked him a couple questions, you know, and uh, it's like, hey, Bo, did you have fun? You know, no, no, no. OK. All right. Uh, did, did you learn anything? No, no, no. You know, and he was frustrated. And it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna tell you what, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you the, I'm gonna give you the car ride home, or you can be frustrated. And then we're, we'll talk a little bit. So we gave him the car ride and uh, made sure he knew how much I loved him and that my love doesn't hinge on a win or a loss. And uh, then we started touching on like, Hey, this is great because you don't really learn a lot when you win, right? It's easy. And it's, but when you lose and you get a kind of a taste of this and you don't like it, that oftentimes can fuel your actions moving forward. And uh, so it was a cool moment. And, uh, and I think it's really going to help him grow. And, uh, and I think he's going to get after it. Uh, cause, cause he's got it, you know, everyone, everyone that's seen him do anything's like, man, that kid's got it, but he's never failed. So now it's like, okay, all right, good. Like that. Let's, what do you, now what, what are you going to do next? How are you going to respond? So it, it was well, cool. Love that. The, the quote that I just wrote down, my love doesn't hinge on a win or a loss. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think a dad ever or mom uh, in the car ride uh, after a loss, I don't think they're ever trying to um, to put off this vibe that they don't love their child. 
I think they're trying to uh, uh, tell them they do love them and they do care. And this is why I am angry. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I think it takes a quiet car ride home uh, to be able to, if you go into the brain of the child in the back seat, uh, to, to notice, no, this is a very sensitive time where anything pushy or negative or harsh is going to sound like you don't love them because they already don't love themselves. They're already so upset with the, the strikeout or the missed tackle or the missed free throw um, that uh, it really almost made me chuckle hearing you, you, a great coach of positive nature, still having to uh, yeah. remember, oh, what, what did Nick Hunley's dad do? Yeah, he, yes. he, he was quiet. What did uh, Coach Ballgame's dad do? Yeah, he just sat in his lawn chair. Like, this is something that happens to the best of them. It, it happens to everybody because you just want your child to do so well. But yeah, I think um, the quiet car ride home was the way to go because uh, yeah, it, whatever you think you're putting off as far as anger, uh, uh, you know, the, my love doesn't hinge on a win or a loss, multiply it by like 50. And that's what the kids uh, feeling in the back seat. So I had a great learning experience got called up my freshman year of high school as a pitcher and uh and we had a great team like everybody thought we were going to win the state championship that year and I was playing JV but I was a, a, a pitcher and I got called up for the playoff run and I was going to be the number two starter we had a senior uh our number one guy and I would be number two and <laughs> but right before the playoffs started I did an inner squad with all the starters. So I'm pitching against all these seniors. Oh yeah. And I, I'm already a little nervous because I've looked up to these guys my whole life. I was the, I was the ball boy for their football team and, you know, uh, the bat boy for their baseball teams. And now I'm actually their peer. I'm their teammate. And, uh, you know, this would be something good to talk with uh, Mookie about just, you know, coming up with, with big poppy and guys he probably admired, yeah. but, they crushed me. It was home run, double, triple, home run, double, triple. And then after all nine of them got on base, I didn't get anybody out. All nine of them came up, gave me a hug, and they're like, hey, rookie, you're good. Yeah. We're, ju we're, we're just really good. We're better. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this is the last time you'll have to face us uh, in this playoff run. Wow. We, we went on to win the state championship. And, uh, you know, I got the I got the win in, in the second round. I, uh, I got the win in, in the semifinal round. I took a loss in game two of the championship, but I think I, I used a lot of that, um, that, that learning material from the inner squad to come back in the, in the decisive game three of the state championship and got the save. Um, so I think Bo's going to be just fine, man. Yeah, and, and it's so cool for you to talk about your teammates, right? Because they knew, they kind of knew what you needed, and that's a championship team is the talent's one thing, but there's plenty of teams with talent, but I love their heart to know that, hey, Coach Ballgame needs a little love right here. We, uh, and they came at you hard, which is great. Like, that's the truest form of competition. Everyone thinks being a good teammate is going easy on your teammate. No, no, you go at them as hard as you can, and you insist that they go at you as hard as they can. And then you guys grow as a team and as individuals. But then when it's all said and done, hey, Rook, we love you. And you're going to be great. Don't you worry about it. We're just a little bit further along on the road to success. I love that. Yeah, it was great. To totally a, a learning experience for me. And um, I, I'll, I'll treasure it. And I, that, that's, the, that's the only state championship we got. You know, and yeah. we, we were supposed to have a bunch. So, uh Hard yeah, to win. Th th those are the moments. Those are the moments that that hold on. I'll hold on to forever. And and they teach me tons of life lessons. Yeah, I love that. That is that's great. And uh, yeah. I did not know you were such a such a proficient pitcher. I had you as an outfielder, and uh, you know, but pitching was a jack of all trades too. Well, you know, as Nick Hunley said, you know, don't specialize. You're that's you're. Right you're everything. And that was me. I, you know, I was a good high school pitcher. I do think I burnt my arm out throwing too many curveballs when I was 12, 13, 14. And, you know, that's why part of my mission is to make sure 
we're we're throwing that fastball and that change and not as many twisty curves um I like that because i kind of burn it out uh, at an early age but yeah i i played first shortstop pitched in high school and then there was one spot open uh, when i got to college and that was right field so i raised my hand and i said yeah i'm a right fielder of course i yeah, am you are yeah, and i just are. I figured it out, but you know, those basketball and football practices, they taught me a lot about, uh, about taking a good, uh, a good path to a fly ball or, you know, anything like that. And, and just being open, just being open to trying new things. Uh, if you're specializing in one position then you're, you're not open to it mentally. And then that kind of shuts you down physically too. Yeah. I, uh, when I got drafted, I got drafted with another first baseman and uh, primarily a first baseman. And as soon as I got drafted, they said, hey, congratulations, you're going to play left field. And I mean, that was a challenge, right? Uh, and my first year in pro ball, they took me out, you know, in the seventh inning for a defensive replacement. By the end of my career, defense was one of my strengths. So as athletes, like identify your weaknesses and then try to make them a strength instead of so many people just do what they're good at. And, uh, and then they never really worry about their weaknesses. Like, true athletes identify their weaknesses and try to turn them into strengths. It's good. Right. It's really good. Of course they do. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, I don't see you having any weaknesses in the, in the coaching game uh, as when I've seen you coach uh, it's just been strength upon strength, but is there a, if you had a weakness in your, in your coaching repertoire, something you're constantly working on, where yeah. do you go? I am, I am constantly working on uh, competitive balance uh, because I think like most coaches and most people that are passionate about a game that we love and competing, and my wife reminds me about this pretty often, uh, I, I get, I'm really competitive, right? And uh, so that's the, the constant thing I, I need to be mindful of, and I've gotten way better at it. Uh, but even when I was watching Bo's game, like the competitor in me, was just like, you know, come on, Bo, you know, and I had to breathe and internalize it. And, uh, you know, Bo's really good at intercepting balls. And, uh, and he had one play where a kid jumped over him, caught it and scored a touchdown. And it was like, but, but how could you let that happen? But no, you got to stay calm and you got to breathe. And he's looking right at you, dad. And uh, so for me as a father, as a coach, uh, being, uber competitive, which drives us to great, you know, success when we're athletes as coaches, like we've said, and Nick Hundley, and we all talk about that our passions and our intensity is not going to fuel the kids passion. So our competitive nature is not going to make the boys any more competitive. If anything, it's going to shy them away because they're like, Oh, coaches matter coaches, this coaches yelling. So for me, it's that, what about you coach? Yeah. Well, I, I just thought of something as you were saying that, um, you know, I talk a lot about my dad just being very relaxed and cool but uh, I think he just he gave that impression to me there are definitely moments and he's a a, a a natural competitor as am I like I did not like to lose in anything a game of horse against my brothers or yeah. horseshoes or tennis or anything I did not want to lose and I I know there was there was a time when um I was pitching and I lost one to nothing a guy hit a home run off me in the, the Little League World Series or uh, Babe Ruth World Series and I didn't know this because he just gave me a hug after the game but behind closed doors he he had a nice punch vest with the with the pillow and the bed in his hotel room afterwards you know just getting out that competitive uh you know nest that he had and yeah you just can't let your kids see it you know it it, it you have to be able to um, compartmentalize and, and breathe in the moment because um, if he would have let me see that then for the rest of my career uh, I would have been afraid of that happening I would have been afraid of letting them down and yeah oh there's that word afraid and you yeah. just you can't become uh, an elite athlete if you're afraid of something if you're living in that fear of failure or anything like that so um uh, for me, what am I always working on? I think it's just to slow down. I kind of, um, I, I, I come from a school of, well, you know, baseball is kind of slow. So let's go the opposite. Let's pick it up. Let's, let's get the speed. 
going. Let's get the reps going uh, because I, I don't want kids to get bored. But uh, there are moments when I, I just mow through very important uh, uh, Im important, like teaching moment at times, uh, like tie on a shoe, you know, yeah, I love uh, that. Or, or, you know, just, just getting down on a knee and tying somebody's shoe or answering, you know, a question that I just don't want to answer. It's, 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 uh, we're in the middle of a thing and everything's moving smoothly. And then there's this question this kid has, or, or just a comment about yeah. what he had for breakfast. And, yeah. um, there is a balance to it, but I'm, I'm constantly trying to kind of watch other coaches because I have a lot of assistant coaches that don't run the heartbeat like I do. They're more mm -hmm. of just kind of fill in uh, the gaps and they take the time. They're always moving slowly yeah. and, and they're having conversations with, with players. So um, as much as I want to be the motor, there are there are times when I'm like, oh man, I should have turned the car off. I should have parked the car and just, yeah. just sat down and, and talked with this kid. So that's a constant that I'm always trying to work on. Yeah. I, uh, I, I love the thought of, and I had this conversation with one of our uh, relievers this year, young guy came up and, uh, and got put in some pretty challenging spots as a rookie. And, uh, and, and didn't have great success right away. So the thing that I brought up with him was Kobe Bryant, right? And not, not a lot of people remember Kobe as a rookie in the playoffs against Utah. He shot, what, three consecutive air balls, yeah. right? So, so as coaches, it's instilling that fearlessness uh, to, in our kids of like, hey, if you make a mistake, take the shot. Take the next shot. Breathe, get back in the moment and take the shot. When Kobe Bryant took that third consecutive air ball, I knew he was going to be great. And I think a lot yeah. of us did as coaches, because you're like, this kid is fearless. And that's half the battle. Michael Jordan, same thing. Half the battle was he wanted the ball, you know? And that's the biggest thing that you talk about, this one common, uh, you know, commonality, if that's a word, with greatness, is they're not afraid to fail, you know? And they learn that somewhere. Now, they learn that somewhere. And it's my belief they learn that at a very young age, with some good coaches and, uh, or maybe it was a tough moment. Uh, Kobe talks about when Allen Iverson schooled him when he first came up and, and Kobe was like, okay, he embarrassed me and that's not going to happen again. So he watched mm -hmm. every second of Allen Iverson and he was like, I'm going to find weaknesses. And then he beat him in the, in the finals of the NBA. It's you hear stories like that all the time, but the, the main thing for us as coaches is just instilling fearlessness. There you go. Us. Yeah, there you go. If you hear nothing else, hear that out there, parents and yep. coaches. Fearlessness is um, is what makes you great, and and it made Mookie Betts great. Good. Let me introduce our uh, our guest for this week. Uh, man, a lot of accolades. Uh, two time World Series champ, five time All Star, AL MVP, four time Silver Slugger, five time Gold Glove winner. The thing I'm most proud of this young man is he's a tremendous human, and he's uh, respectful, hardworking. He's humble. He's a great teammate. Mookie Betts, welcome to Talking Shop. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for uh, having me on, man. I, I miss you already, bro. Thanks. Thanks, Mook. So uh, <laughs> we're going to open it up to questions. I'll have my partner, Coach Ballgame, kick us off with the first question and hit well, him up, Coach Ballgame. Man, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just a fan. I'm just going to be sitting here smiling and drinking water and laughing the whole time. But uh, for the listener out there, I think we have one. Um, well, how do you guys know each other, Chad Chopper? Well, uh, I met Mookie in 2020. Uh, he got traded to the Dodgers and, uh, and was just blown away with who he is as a young man and uh, his work ethic. I've never seen it before. And uh, not, not just from a superstar, but uh, he's just, I mean, he makes everybody feel special. And this is common theme of the guests that we have on. I remember a conversation Mookie and I had and he gave me eye contact. He put his hand on my shoulder. I mean, he made me feel like I was Mookie Betts. And that's just who he is. Tremendous character. But uh, we met with the Dodgers. And, uh, man, so blessed to know him and uh, very proud of who he is. Awesome. Uh, Mookie, great to meet you. Uh, I guess I'll start there. Who taught you that? Who taught you to give eye contact and, and, and shake that hand and, and make people feel good? 
Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, my dad definitely taught me uh, the eye contact and, uh, you know, really, I think the, the feel good thing just you know, really just comes from both of my parents. I mean, you know, I just I'm not above, you know, anybody, you know, it takes everybody um, to 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 make a system go, you know, and so CHOP is just as important as me, who is just as important as Doc, who is just as important as everybody, you know, there. So, um, you know, someone... <clears throat> I forgot, I think I read it on uh, Instagram or something, but it just put things in perspective, like not saying Chop is the janitor, but you'll get the analogy, like treat the janitor <laughs> this as well as you treat e everybody because, you know, the janitor is essentially, he's the one cleaning up and, y you know, you'll notice if a, jan a janitor is not there, you know, if you treat him wrong and now everything's dirty around you. And and so, um, you know, just uh, you treat everybody right because, you know, they, they, they're they going to treat you right, you know, and that's uh, just kind of, what I keep in mind. Awesome. We had uh, Doc Roberts on last week and same thing. It, it seems like everybody Chopper brings in is of high character and just uh, really seeks out everyone. And, and, and the way he put it is uh, financially winning games, uh, no matter what, he knew he was going to succeed in life because of the way he treats people. And I see the same thing with you. Uh, the way you serve your community and just the way that you have this light that that shines while you're playing the game. And, um, you know, as, as a coach of kids, uh, when I ask who's your favorite player and they say Mookie Betts, then I get to say, yeah, he's got this light. He's got this thing inside and um, it just makes people feel good. And then these kids, they want to be like that right? They want to do those things and they want to learn, oh, how, how, do, how do I do that? So thanks for coming on. I'll start with my first question, which I think most people know, what is your nickname? I always give kids nicknames. I think it makes kids feel good and, and welcome at my camps. So what is your nickname? Or maybe you have multiple nicknames and how did you get it? Nah, Mookie is, is my nickname. Um, so whatever version of, of Mookie you want to call, call me um which is pretty much just mook you know i think that's pretty much what everybody calls me and so uh my mom and dad were watching uh mookie blaylock like, play basketball actually um which i did not get to see him or, or know him or anything but uh yeah i got it from the basketball mookie and not the the mookie wilson did you guys either watch a mookie blaylock at all or no i did I chopper did, yeah. I, yeah i was oh, yeah. i was yeah. i'm 10 years older than you mookie and and chopper you're older than me i am i am yeah you really soaked Great. up the 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 joe dumars isaiah thomas years man i was a huge laker fan so yeah mm -hmm. getting to grow up watching magic and uh you know uh prime time all that showtime excuse me it was the best so growing up i was pretty lucky yeah. I, uh, I have this uh, question down, and this is a good time to ask it. Um, mine was MJ, but I also love Dan Marino. Who was the guy, Mookie, that you admired, wanted to be like? Who was that athlete when you were growing up that, that you wanted to be? Um, you know, I honestly don't have the answer to that question. Um, I, I really feel like my my mom and my dad instilled so much in me that it didn't, I didn't really focus on trying to be like someone else. It was, they always just said, be yourself, be yourself and um, emulate. No, so you get like guys, like <clears throat> you may emulate four or five different guys and, and bring those four or five different styles into one play. And so that's kind of what I, what I've always tried to do. And, um, you know, I would watch, I'm trying to think of, I, I didn't even really watch baseball growing up. It was all pretty much basketball. And so, um, you know, I would watch AI, Kobe. Um, for some reason, Eric Snow. I really love watching Eric yeah. Snow. Yeah. Stud. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I would watch guys like that and just try and take Eric's cross or AI's crossover and mix it with uh eric's mid-range and you know then kobe's back to the bat you know whatever just try and mix it all all together and um that's just kind of how i got to where i where i've gotten to um you know in baseball it was you know obviously working uh doing some things with jeter uh, not doing things with jeter but like looking at how he played and you know, played shortstop and 
you know, I, I never really hit like Griffey. My favorite hitter at the time was uh, Manny. And so I would mm. try and hit like Manny and even it, it would end up not looking anything like Manny. But I think just the mental, <laughs> uh, you know, just the mental like, oh, yeah, I look like Manny. And, you know, it would help, help me, uh, you know, hit and, and whatnot. And so I didn't really have a favorite guy. I just tried to emulate a whole lot of different guys and one of them stuck and it was Mook. Makes sense. Yep. You, you're just being you. And that makes a lot of sense watching you play the game. Like it, you, uh, you can, you can take the smoothness of Eric Snow and the quickness of AI and uh, you know, the, the swing of Manny, but it, the center of it is just you. And yeah, make, that's a great answer. Chopper. In, well, one thing about Mookie, uh, I'll touch on real quick, and then I'll ask my question. And we talk about this with the kids is trying to instill fearlessness, right? Mm -hmm. And everything that they do and, and being aggressive. And Mookie is like the epitome of fearlessness. I mean, he, he just, he, he, he talks about it where he anticipates and he knows, and he'll be the guy that'll round a base, even though coach is saying on the bag, because he knows, I know where the ball's at. It's not in the cutoff man's hand yet. And I'm going to take a step or two. And if they fumble the relay, I'm going. And yeah. so I love that about Mookie. And uh, it's just cool. Like, be fearless. Uh, yeah. Hey, Mook, question I have for you is, what do you like most about the game of baseball? Oof. Um, you know, it, it initially, it took me a while to, to even learn to, to love baseball. For a while, I didn't, you know, I played it just because I was, you know, pretty good at it. Um, and then I eventually learned to love it. I think that's what I... Uh, I guess what I love about baseball is that it taught me how to it, it taught me how to love and taught me how to love in a different way like unconditionally other, other than your wife obviously and you know kids and those type of things it's just a different way to, to love unconditionally because baseball like it's a game of failure so you have to love the game you have to work at it you have to do all these things to be good at it and I think um, just using that and then applying that concept to life in general um, is what I, I, I've loved so much about baseball is, you know, it's just, uh, I know it's kind of, that's kind of a, a tough answer, but it's really, it's really just, it, it taught me the concept of, of love and, and dedication that you have to have to be successful in whatever you want to do in life. Huge. And that's a huge thing we talk about with youngsters is fall in love with the grind of this game, yeah. right? Because it's not basketball. I not yeah. the life that it's, it's the grind. It's the grind behind it. You have to love. Oh, man, I love that. And that's so powerful. Uh, great answer. That's a great answer. Uh, Coach Ballgame. Man, that's so good. Because, I mean, we're on this podcast, we're trying to make coaches better coaches. Uh, we've seen some problems with youth sports where, uh, you know, there just needs to be more positivity and character within it. And parents make them better parents. And then that'll make kids happier kids. And when you've got uh, a face of the game uh, giving an answer like that, man, we're in good hands. So uh, I love that. Um, it, your mom, uh, if, I'm, uh, uh, if, if I'm reading this correctly, was one of your first Little League coaches. Was that right? Yeah, she was, my, uh, she was actually my first coach. Yep. When I was How thinking. about that? so good and and um a great bowler uh and, and just seems like she has the same exact life that you have it's this uh it, it's just contagious um but i mean what things uh, did your mom do for you in those little league days uh growing up that you really feed on now as a major leaguer um you know it's almost two different. Uh, my parents really, um, it's like they, they're mixed. They're two different people. And I feel like I'm a mix of, of, of both, obviously. Um, because my mom instilled when I was young, like you pretty much do anything it takes to win, you know, in anything, you know, I, obviously within the rules, I, I'm never, never the cheap, you know, trying to cheat kind of guy. Um, but anything within the rules, you know, do what it takes to, to, to win. And whether it, make some make some people mad hey I did what it took to win and, and you know we just keep it moving to the next day and then my dad was the opposite like he not necessarily he he, de he will do what it takes to win but he's so methodical about everything and so like um <clears throat> my dad 
is like the percentages. Like I, I, I it, it would say he would he would put things into perspective. Like more times than not, if you uh, react this way or handle things this way or work this way, your percentages of being better go higher. That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, or, but instead of it, instead of my average being 250, well, if I work this way and, and dedicate this many hours and do this, that, and the other, then my average can go up to 300, which, you know, obviously is, is a big jump. Um, obviously, that, obviously, that's still failing seven, seven out of 10 times, but my, but my percentage, I gave myself a better chance more times than the next guy. Uh, and so, you know, I think having the mix of the two definitely uh, where, this, the, where I, I've been pretty good super competitive and wanting to win, but then also thinking about every, every move, every move, like just basically playing chess. It's exactly. Yeah. It. Well, it speaks to your baseball IQ, uh, which is, I can't find it to be matched. You just, um, if, if, if I feel like if anybody has a question on the team uh, about baseball or what to do in a certain moment, I feel like they'd go to what's Mookie think. Well, yeah. would, would you agree? And if not, who do you go to for that? Man, this is a big spot. I feel vulnerable. Who do I go to? Yeah, for me now, um, because I've been playing, um, you know, I've, I've, I don't really have to ask any questions anymore. Um, but at the time um, I was with Boston, I would ask David Ortiz, um, Pedroia, um, Bogey, Bogarts because he was there a year or two, a couple years before me. Um, and those are the guys I really talked to the most. Jackie, Victorino, um, they helped me a lot. And so those are the guys that I would talk to. I mean, it was, it was simple stuff like, man, in an eighth inning or ninth inning, and you know, you're up by two with a guy on first, like I don't even know where to throw the ball, you know, little situations like that. Um, you know, people overlook those, those, those details, just simply hitting the cutoff, man. You know, throwing to the right base and backing up. I know I'm terrible at backing up, but <laughs> but uh, you know that that those type of things are important. I wish I wish I really wish I would do I would back up the the base more. I just get caught watching the play, which is horrible. So <laughs> tell <laughs> tell people like do not do what I do in, in that situation. Like you need to go back up the base. And, um, you know. Um, all it's all it's gonna take is to get burned once. Uh, all I need I need to get burned once and experience it, and then once you experience it, it never happens again. Um, but you know, thank God, right now it hasn't happened. But now that I'm talking about it, I gotta make it a point to to, <laughs> to go back up so there is no one time of getting burned. Nice job. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got something to touch on what Mookie said when he said, uh, I found a way to win, and his mom instilled that in him. And I think sometimes, and we've talked about this, Coach Ballgame, when you're competing, there's this nature of like, well, I, I don't want to go too hard against my opponent. But the truest, purest form of competition is, to Mookie's point, is I'm going to come at you with everything I have and find a way to win, and I demand the same out of you. And one guy's going to win that day, and the other guy's going to grow. And then you, then you can love on and respect your opponent, go on to the next day. But in that moment, the greatest form of respect is going at your opponent as hard as you can within the confines of the game. That is respecting your opponent. So uh, Mookie, I love that answer. And, uh, and there's power in that. Like that's, I just, I just feel like sometimes when we talk about in sports, like, oh, well, you know, if you know you're better than, no, 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 I'm going to come at you, you come at me. And, uh, and that's a good way to go about it. And uh, I love that. Uh, question I have, Mook, what? Uh, was your greatest memory from youth sports? Doesn't just have to be baseball because you're good at basketball, football, bowling, uh, you know, good at chess, uh, you know, uh, you're probably pretty good at making poems. Uh, but go ahead. <laughs> um, my greatest memory in, in sports, I would have to say my, great, ooh, my greatest memory in sports. Oh, uh, probably in high school, there was a game. We ended up going into overtime. And the guy, one of their point guards was, you know, talking stuff to me. And we ended up going to overtime. And I, the kid, he was, in, he was going to Ohio State to play basketball. And I knew I was playing baseball, but I just wanted to try and prove a point to him. Like, yeah, true, prove a point to him. Like, hey, I'm just as good as you are. This isn't even my sport or whatever. And I never forget in overtime, we scored 14 points and I went at, I scored all 14 points going at that dude 
at going at his neck just to prove a point like you know this is this is my gym you know this is this is I I'm the guy here you got to worry about not everybody else and, um I think that's you know where my mom comes into play that competitive nature it comes out and um but then also within that competitive nature um you can't let I did a good job in not letting my emotions take over obviously everything is emotional you get excited and all those type of things but um some people it's hard to to separate the two you know you let your emotions go but you also have to think logically like you said earlier and you know play chess you know as well and so I, I'm able to I was able to control my emotions let them go but control them enough to keep in mind I'm still playing chess and still having to make the right moves and, and those type of things so that's probably my favorite memory is just uh and, and, and over time scoring all 14 points um with that dude guarding me and um, that was probably one of the happiest, uh, happiest days uh, of my life for sure. How important is breathing when you talk about controlling your emotions or even in a big moment in, uh, currently, you know, you're in that, that big stage world series stage. How much do you rely on your breathing just to keep you calm and in the moment? Um, I actually rely on breathing 10 times more than you would believe, uh, than you believe. Um, I, I still, now I get, I get anxious. I get I wouldn't say nervous, but the butterflies, though that that's still that comes in live VPs against Bueller in the on the backfield. Mm -hmm. That's that's all the time. I mean, um, but it's just like in those situations and when you are nervous, which is absolutely not uh, there's nothing wrong with being nervous. Everybody, every, that happens to everybody. Um, but just like you said, just breathing slows the heart rate down and, and just slows your body down. And so you can make the decisions and, and really play like you want to play. Um, you don't want to, uh, you know, just you don't want to have your heart racing and you're going out there and, you know, jittery and all those type of things. And so how I slow that down is just simply breathing. Like I, I'll sometimes, if it's a 2-2 two -two pitch and it's a big pitch right here, I, I step out and I take me a couple of deep breaths and then and get back in, you know. And so um, breathing is probably top I would say top, definitely top two or three biggest things in in my arsenal as far as uh just calming myself down and really being in the moment of that coach ball game we talk a lot about heart rate and kind of slow heartbeat in the big moment and um you touched on breathing in the moment something that's really <laughs> turned the volume down on my butterflies is just being a dad and having two young daughters now where it's like going through these processes of being a father, that's way harder than hitting a, an O2 slider uh, to right field. Um, so my question, you're, you're a dad. Uh, uh, what's the best part for you about being a dad? If you had to narrow it down to one. Um. The best part about being a dad, if I had to narrow it down to one, um, is really, she's really taught me to just enjoy, um, in, like in to really enjoy imagining things. I know that sounds weird, but like, she has these cups and these dolls and you know she has tea parties and does all these things with like uh, toys you know they're, they're they're not alive they're not real and so her imagination has to has to really go has really be going in order for her to to bring these things to life and so <clears throat> how i translate for that that to myself is like when i'm on deck or when i'm in the outfield or yeah, even in practice or whatever like, as I'm getting into this, as, I, as I'm watching the bat in front of me, or I'm imagining, okay, he's throwing, I, I just imagine him throwing a slider here or imagine him throwing a fastball here and I imagine myself hitting it, um, you know, this way, that way, whatever it is. And that's not, sit, not to say like that works every single time, but there, there was many, many, many times that I imagined this and it, that's exactly what happened. And so, again, I'm, I'm a guy of percentages, like if that, if just imagining that, uh, that takes zero effort, you know, it's just really just thinking about what you want to hit, or what you want to do or whatever it is. Think about how this guy, like 
I, I'm uh, a chop. I don't know. You probably remember uh, there was a couple of games late in the season where I had a bunch of sun balls and we had day games and I had like three or four balls in the sun, but like in the first inning, like I, I, I it didn't start right uh, in front of me. It started kind of off to this, the sun started kind of off to the side. And I was like here in a couple of innings, the sun's going to be right here. And so I was in the outfield, like putting my hand up and imagining the ball coming into the sun and, and like, staring staring in a certain spot until the ball comes out of the sun and then bam it happened three times in you know that game and so just that the power of imagination is huge but she's definitely taught me like just that you know it's kind of weird but yeah what is what it is oh that's so good and we've talked a lot about this like imagining the positives and and keeping it very succinct where i was teaching a hitting clinic named name drop salute just the other week with kurt gibson and I'm like, what should we talk about, Kirk Gibson, to all these kids and parents? Balance, vision. And he's like, no, give me the microphone. I'm going to talk to the parents about being positive. <laughs> and so he gets on the microphone and he's like, do your kids ever strike out? How do they feel after they strike out? Pretty bad, right? Pretty sour. Um, uh, if you yell at them after they strike out, is that going to make them feel better? Are they going to love baseball more? And the parents are like, no. And then he's like, I want all these kids to get behind me at home plate and imagine you just hit a home run and I'm going to go first. Imagine seeing that ball fly over. And then Kirk Gibson, it, he redoes his, his run around the bases. He does this guy right here for all these kids that don't even know who he is, but that power of just a positive thought uh, in a high leverage moment is, is so huge. So I love that. That's what your daughter has helped you figure out. I got one last question, Chopper, and then I'll kick it to you. Um, I coach all types of kids all over the country, Mookie Betts, uh, and, and take your time if you need to with this answer, but what's your advice to me as a, as a guy that coaches from age three to 12, boys and girls from all over the country, what, what's your advice to me as a youth coach? Ooh, that's a great question. I would say, uh, obviously, Kirk was right about keeping the uh, – the positivity thing, um, but also really get them in other sports. Like uh, really, you know, the kids nowadays, um, you know, it's kind of limiting, limiting themselves to one sport. Um, I think it's just really the worst thing, worst thing for them. Um, I really, really honestly feel like me playing football, playing basketball, bowling, I, I can use my athleticism from other sports, uh, my thinking strategy from other sports and just apply it to, baseball and um so I, I would say just you know obviously like I said the positivity thing you can teach them um everything you've been, te been teaching them but um really getting them into other sports um I think was huge is huge really uh just in general I mean um, I know it's kind of a, a bailout answer but um you know it's just uh I, I, I truly think you just it's hard for a kid, even myself, but I can only imagine a 12 year old kid locking in on one sport for that long, you know? I mean, I really feel like diverting their attention and learning different things, um, learning things you can't, you won't learn uh, how to mentally prepare for football if you never play, you know? And you, you, you don't know what you could learn in mentally preparing for a football game that you can bring into a baseball game. You know, and you may not be able to learn anything, but, um, you know, you, you just never, you just never know. You never know what you're going to be good at. You know, you're 12, you know? So I always thought I was going to be playing basketball and bowling, but here I am playing baseball, you know? And so, um, that's just, that's what I, all I would really say. That's good. And I guarantee you that guy that you, uh, grinded against in high school basketball, that moment helped you. Uh, go hit for the cycle in Toronto yeah. in 2018, you know, Absolutely. like, and, and, and the mental things you learn from all different sports helps you be a better father and yes. definitely helps me in high yeah. leverage moments. So perfect. Chad yes. Chopper, what you got? Yeah. I, so I'm dealing with that right now uh, with uh, you both know, I took a head coaching job at a small uh, Christian high school. Right. So the previous coach, uh, he did not love the fact that, you know, uh, his kids were playing other sports and this, that, and the other. So the first thing that parents were hitting up with me and, and even players are like, 
hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing basketball and, and football and these other sports and soccer, and I, I'm pumped. I'm like, that's great. You know, uh, I've talked to Mookie about it. I talked to Cody Bellinger. He talked about how soccer was so instrumental with him growing up. And uh, these are two of the best athletes I've ever seen. So anytime you can get your body moving in a different way outside of your quote unquote main sport, because like Mookie said, they're 12, you know, yeah. you never really know what you're going to do. Uh, one thing I'm proud of with our group is we do a lot of speed and power, right? Mm -hmm. So parents and coaches start buying into speed and power. I'm lucky my wife's, you know, was a nationally ranked sprinter. And uh, one of our kids' best coaches, Mook, your mom was your coach too. And mm -hmm. Deb, the diesel, she's, she's one of the kids' best coaches, but it's about being a better athlete. And, mm -hmm. and having some mental toughness. And, uh, and so like, that's the one thing I can say is do multiple sports and try to become a better athlete every day, you know, yep. cause you never know where that's going to take you. Uh, Mook, I had a few more questions, but uh, I think the last one I'm going to ask, uh, and once again, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, but the last question I have is why is impacting your community in a positive way and making a difference important to you? It's a great question. I, I would say, um, you know, my, my mom and dad, I could attest everything to them because they're you know, kind of like my best friends. Um, just don't ever forget where you came from, you know, and um, you never know the impact. Just bringing us some just bringing a smile to someone's face. You never know what impact you have on that, um, you know. I, I I would do anything for for pretty much anybody, even though I don't know them. You know, you just never know what people are going through. Um, you, know, you just just don't just bringing smiles and doing things for other people. To me, brings it brings joy to me, and um, and that's kind of what I keep in mind. Like, if I want to be happy, then I want everybody else around me to be happy. Um, yeah, and, and so, you know, that, that smiles are contagious. So you bring a smile to someone else's face, that's going to make you smile. Um, and, and again, man, it's just your community is just where you came from. You know, it's just, you can't, don't abandon, you know, somebody helped you get to where you, you are. And, and so nice, just, uh, I can't even think of the word and the, the little phrase I'm looking for, but, um, if someone helped you get to where you are, then it's only right for you to help the next the next generation get to where they want to be in in life. And so I just uh, keep that in mind and give back and, and really do anything to to help kids out. One thing that we talk about a lot here as coaches is uh, you hear about the win at all cost. We want to change that to win the heart at all cost, right? right? Win the kid's heart at all cost. And one thing we talk about is a random act of kindness, mm -hmm. right? And it's something that you're touching on, like. Look for moments and opportunities. It doesn't have to be a big, huge deal, but it, it can be, be no, it it's a smile. It's a, it's a glass of water, a bottle of water. It's, it's a, Hey, hold, how's your day going? Holding the yeah. door open. Hold the door open. Uh, tell your teacher, you appreciate them. Take the trash out. Tell mom and dad, thank you. And yeah. uh, that's so powerful. Uh, when we say it, it means one thing, but when you say it, it has a whole nother uh, weight to it. So Mookie, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate you coming on. Of course. Yeah. Thank you having me thank you thank you guys for having me. you guys have a uh, something special i've really enjoyed being on here and uh you know i can't wait to see you guys here uh, here soon happy thanksgiving and good luck with your wedding good luck with that wedding coming up coming up soon it's coming up soon <laughs> hey you know, uh, choke up every moment uh, every uh, that that day tends to just fly by so breathe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right, right Mook, have a great day see you guys see ya bye, -bye. Wow, Coach Ballgame. I mean, had a boy. What, hey. what a blessing. Well, he's so, you know, um, he does have this light that, that just kind of shines, even through the Zoom uh, video there. But like, it, it, he gives you this ease and he, he kind of gives you this sense when you're asking questions or just hanging out with him um, that he, he, is, uh, he is thinking about the people that paved the way for him. And he is making a conscious effort to, to make whoever he runs into and he doesn't know me never met me but he he made me feel welcome and and didn't make me feel less than and the the people that i meet of his stature <laughs> who have won mvps and world series and uh, you know millions look up to when when you're talking about holding doors for people and and making people smile in a day and age 
when kids actually think it's cool and and popular to be mean uh, and and uh, and bully someone, when you've got somebody like that uh, uh, preaching the truth, it sure is um, it, it sure is inspiring. One thing that I remember uh, from Mookie, and there's a number, there's a number of examples about just his heart and his character, is we're going through uh, the playoffs last uh, in 2020. So we're in the bubble, right? That's one thing in and of itself. That was this all encompassing, like drained. It was fun, but it took a lot out of you because you're, you know, you're you're stuck in a hotel for a month and a half and uh, trying to trying to finish this goal off. Well, we had a moment where uh, Kenley had a tough a tough spot where he came in and it didn't necessarily go his way. So the next day we're going into the hitters meeting, and uh, Mookie like asked if he could address the team, right? And uh, he goes, "Hey, make sure." that everybody, when you get a chance today, just put your hand on Kenley and love on him because we're going to need him to win the World Series. This is in the hitters meeting. This is not mm -hmm. a team meeting. This is like, hey, how are we going to beat our opponent today, uh, you know, with our offense? And all he wanted to talk about was reminding everybody, like, hey, our brother uh, needs to be loved on, kind of like you were loved on with your high school team when they, they got you pretty good. Uh, that's who Mookie is. He's always looking at others. And, uh, and, I mean, man, what a special, special human. It's awesome. Uh, really, really good. I, uh, this is the first moment and I've had great moments while doing this podcast, but this is the first one, like, man, I think we're going to make a difference here. This is, that was, yeah. that was great. And there's a lot of kids that are going to hear his words there and, and hopefully, uh, take it to heart. So great job getting him, Chad. That's all. Hey, talking about Mook, talking about breathing, right? Like how cool was that? Because it's great when Coach Ballgame and, and Coach Chop say it because, yeah, sure, they're pretty smart. All of a sudden, now you're getting one of the greatest players to ever step on a baseball field, talking about how breathing is one of the very most important things he does. So why wouldn't we learn that at a young age, right? It all Don't, makes don't sense. take it from us. Yeah, don't take no. it from us. Take it, it from It all Mookie makes Bats. sense now. Every, every, every time I watch him do something great in a big moment, it all makes sense now, just spending 30 minutes with him, talking to him about, um, you know, how his – mom taught him to grind and his dad taught him how to be calculated yes. and, and, and play chess um, and, and play the odds. So, so cool. And um, Hey, can't wait. Who we got next week, brother. Next week. Uh, we're in for a real treat. Uh, one of my favorite dudes on the planet, uh, Brandon belt is coming on the show and Brandon belt is just, uh, you know, we are roommates for three years, me and Brandon belt. And he is just, Man, uh, you know, every week we're excited. And uh, next week, I, I, it's hard to be more excited. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're very blessed uh, to get some of these uh, great, great people on this podcast. And people think they're great for what they do on the field. But hopefully, by the end of this podcast, they'll see that off the field, these are even better humans. And, and that's the point, is these are men of character. And their heart is bigger than what you see on TV. And, uh, and that's the goal. I have a great story to share with, uh, about what Brandon Belt did. Holy smokes. I got to check with him to make sure he'll let me share it. Um, but uh, just an amazing show of his heart and his empathy and his character. Can't wait. We just had that this week with Mookie, and we get more of the same next week with one Brandon boy, Belt. Nope. There'll be more guests coming down, uh, down the line. Subscribe and tell your friends and, and write us a nice review. As we move up the charts, we want to get to that top baseball podcast uh, with our guy, uh, Tommy Gold, who's, who's making this thing pop. So let's give Tommy an attaboy on three. One, two, three. Attaboy. Tommy. Thanks for producing our show. And um, folks, we'll see you every Tuesday. Brand new interview, brand new guest, brand new uh, happiness uptick. Oh, have a great week. And uh, let's start. I want to start finishing this podcast with challenging our viewers and our my co-host and our producer a random act of kindness let's let's see if we can just spread love and kindness throughout our sphere of influence surprise yourself explore the space yeah love that have a great week bye-bye <laughs>